Mel Belli, the lawyer in San Francisco. Uh, I, I'm talking for the Rolling Stones. We, we've got uh, their managers and their principals here. And I've ju just heard that uh, you've offered them your speedway up there for their performance on Saturday. Is that right? That is correct. But this I is an open phone, so we can all talk on it. What I'm trying to find out is uh, what we can do to now, do this For the last 36 hours, I've stood my organization on its ear, Mr. Belli. You see, I don't know anything about this. I'm just coming in late, and I'm trying to straighten something out. So you tell me exactly what it is without... Uh... You know, my first area of policy concern. I do not want this gesture on the part of Mr. Jagger to cost me five cents. If a blade of grass is torn down, they are going to build it up again. <laughs> you know, I was involved in Woodstock. I rep have represented rock groups, and I've been involved both as an attorney and as an executive with festivals. No matter what anybody tells you, they're a pain in the ass. Well, don't turn me into a proctologist. Just tell me what I can do here. Look, somebody tell me why I should want to get this concert going. Are, are you trying to make it so that they can't do this? Is it... No, I want it to happen, but I'm not prepared to have to rebuild my goddamn racetrack. Well, let me ask you this. Will you come up and see if you can work with me on this thing? What I'd time? I'd love to work with you, Mr. Belli, but are you working with Mr. Jagger? I've, I haven't met Mr. Jagger yet. I've only met these other people here. Have you met Mr. Schneider? Yes, he's right here in the office. All right, fine. Uh, he knows what happened at our all meeting right. this afternoon. Well, all right, then call me back and with the thought, see if you possibly could come up tomorrow morning and you and I can sit down and see what we can do with this damn thing. Okay. All right, call me back. Okay. There's no way to do the concert but in that location. And as it stands right now, you're going to have a lot of people. You're going to have at least 100,000 kids there by Saturday well, morning. You don't have any alternative. The only thing you can do is to uh, do an affidavit and a temporary restraining order and talk to one of the judges. So that brings us down to this. Uh, I'll call one of the judges right now. Is that your only chance of forcing these people to do it? Now, don't scare off. Uh, these people, if I were advising them, I'd tell them to hide out. Thing is going on. The Chronicle's coming out with a story tomorrow that it's off. This has been building up for a long time. Well, it's off and on, off and on. Everybody you know, wants a piece of the pie. Right. With all the information. Uh, let's see if we can get some facts to build together on an affidavit here. And so that we'll have that available and in a very short order to show cause. Right. Sheriff wants to know who's going to go to the bathroom and where. They've got a nice little bucolic uh, community there that uh, they know practically when every John is flushed and the orderly habits of the bathroom of all of their uh, voters. Dick Carter's on the line. He's offering us a speedway at Altamont. Hello. Dick, this is Mel Belli for the Stones. If, if, if they were to perform in the speedway, is the, is the speedway uh, open so that they can be seen from the people that can't get in? Uh, yeah, and I'm sure we can work something out because I want the publicity. You want the publicity? Right. Well, you take the publicity, and uh, the Rolling Stones don't want any money. It's for charity, so I'll take the money. Right. <laughs> All right. Well, why don't I do this? Why don't I talk with these people here, and then I'll get back with you, and then uh, if we have to sign anything up and if you need any insurance, which I'm sure you will want, yes. and all the rest of that stuff, I'll work, wo uh, work with you in the morning. Okay. All right. Well, I'll call you back later then after I talk with them, Dick. Bye. And he's offered the Altamont uh, Speedway. There's not enough room for it. And there's no time to move it. You've got to tear down a stage and a scaffolding. You've got stage scaffolding. The phones are in. The generators are there. Everything is left to go. It's anticipated that the amount of kids now traveling cross-country, you may have anywhere from five to 20,000 kids starting to arrive sometime through the day tomorrow. They're all lining up at the airports to come in from as far away as New York. Yeah. Yeah. Are they now? Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. You've got to be kidding. You have no idea what, what goes on here. It's, uh, it's an amazing phenomenon. It's like the lemmings of the sea. Mike Lang is on the line. Yeah, Mike. John says that he doesn't think you can make it over there at the Altamont uh, Speedway. Do you want to talk uh, directly to Mike? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, Mike. Uh, I got the impression from everybody over where you are that there was no way of moving to that Speedway. We can do it. If we have to, we can. Nobody wants to, but if we have to, we can. 
Just a quick and question, though. You were at Woodstock, and you've now been out to Altamont, right, uh -huh. last night. Right. How does it stack up? Do you have the room? I think we have the room, sure. I think we can hold as many people as want to come. Can yeah. you change locations that fast? Well, we had a much bigger operation to change at Woodstock. We did it pretty quick. I don't think we'll have much problem. We're just dealing with a free concert. That's what we want to present. And I think that's what the Stones are up to. They want to play, and they want to play here. Is this going to be Woodstock West? Well, it's going to be San Francisco. Yeah. Do you have any special feelings about this kind of a concert, the spontaneous? Hello? Yes, Bill? Yeah, we still have you. Yeah, I got you in an echo. You think you can pick it up? Well, I'm record? practicing. I'm going on first before the Rolling Stones. I'm testing my voice. Hey, can we get you to pick up the phone like before? Okay. Well, what it is now, we're waiting for Mr. Carter to come in, but uh, he has... Uh, I've just had a letter read to me where... He said that he very definitely uh, wants the Stones and the concert there. So, as of this minute, uh, we're intending that the, the show go on. They have two, three hundred uh, people working, and it's going to be quite a problem to get the thing set up over at the Altamont Speedway, but it will be, and it will start at 10 o'clock. Now, that's where we stand. I'm waiting for Mr. Carter now. Uh, let me ask and see. Are the, the Rolling Stones all in town? Uh, they're coming in tonight. But everybody's uh, ready, and they're all set to go. That's where we are. Is this Mr. Carter? Uh, Sheriff, uh, Mr. Carter just came in. Now, uh, could we talk a little bit? I can put this on the box so that uh, we can all hear. And uh, I, I think to start, Mr. Carter uh, has expressed uh, his willingness to have this on uh, his private property over there. But uh, the question is of this uh, narrow road to uh, come in there. Do you foresee any problems on that? Well, that basically is the highway patrol's problem, and they foresee problems. Uh -huh. and, uh, how many cars can Mr. Carter park on his property? 150 cars per acre. 150 cars per acre times 80 acres. How many? 150 times 80. 12,000. 12,000 12, automobiles. Well, up in Tuolumne County, they estimated they had 80,000 cars. What are we going to do with them? Well, there, it's a much open area around there. I can probably arrange with some of the uh, uh, other landowners. There's one uh, adjoining me that has 2,000 acres. Yes, well, we have some of the adjoining landowners complaining uh, before it's even granted. Uh, there's 50,000 cars that Mr. Carter can't park. We're in trouble. 